seeing your seeds on it, you know, when we're going over the bridge, you can stand up, you're not afraid of heights.
down there and got you up. Covenant is like We ate lunch over there today. That's where we ate lunch today. That's right here at Morgan's family buildings. After September 11th, they, they were getting before September 11th, Morgan's family. Now, I can't see these red seats, these stadium seats. Actually, took four years to build that, which is pretty incredible because they built the Empire State Building in 14 months. But it took four years to build that. ATS booth. If you want to get tickets for a Broadway, Broadway show, you can wait online here. It takes about an hour and a half. But you can get 30% off the price of your ticket. But it's got to be the same day of the show. Here's one of the four Broadway theaters on Broadway, the Palace Theater. And the Palace Theater, that's where the advertising. Is that one strip right there that says Palace? <laughs> Wouldn't even know. It. And there's where West Side Square is. And uh, right here on the left, the Times Square Information Center. If you are going to be hanging out around Times Square, you can get all your information in there. Do not eat in Times Square. It's really ridiculously expensive. Walk up Avenue if you're in this area. Just walk over two Avenue blocks. Between 48th and 15th Street has a lot of great restaurants that are much more reasonably priced. Yeah, All right, so let's see here. That's really cool. Patrick Francis Duffy there. He was the in front of that coat. Okay. He was a hero back in, well, after World War One. he created, uh, I'm not sure what this was. He fought very bravely in the Battle of Argonne Forest in France. And he came back. He was a local uh, mentor to the to the uh, Irish gang and, uh, over in uh, And further up here on the right, with a pigeon on his head, and he was the founder of the musical First video of was a big influence here. Yeah. Dog Flag, Yankee Doodle Dang, they were all his songs. And uh, here, Times Square, where Broadway's closed off with the Frank Sinatra got to start with the Tommy Dorsey Orchestra. You see the opening of a Paramount movie, the mountain and the stars go around the mountain. That's what that building is doing. The setbacks of that building mimic a mountain and then the clock doesn't have numbers, it has stars. That's Paramount. That's where you go get if you were going to uh, be an actor here in New York. Marquee on the right, they have a revolving restaurant up on the 44th floor. 80 bucks. Um, the food's not so good, but it is interesting. The restaurant goes about one hour to go around. You can go, you can go up there and ask about uh, you know, the restaurant and get a nice view. I do that a lot. That's how I learn a lot of stuff. This is where the Lion King is. This is where that bomb was on May 1st that just fizzled out that never went off. This is the old MTV Studios. This is by Channel 2. And there's a rest on the left. They have a 60 foot diameter working Ferris wheel in there. Also have, and you can see it right under that billboard here. On the whole house, you can They got a 30 foot Brontosaurus Rex animatronic that goes around.
40 seconds straight. You're gonna pick one cross town pick. This is the one I'm picking. You want to go? You can't say it because it goes from 40 seconds to 40. But you have the UN, you have Tudor City, you can see the sign for Tudor City up there. You have the Chrysler Building, the Chrysler Building up ahead of it. And you have Times Square, so you can see the signs just going across 40 seconds straight. And those trees that you see up on the right, that's the yard of uh, the New York Public Library. And Bryant Park is one of New Yorkers' favorite parks for this reason. On Mondays in the summer, they show dolls. And on August 2nd, they showed Rosemary's Baby. And it's the one time that they let you bring beer and wine into the park. So they open the park at 5 o'clock to lay down the And it's, all, it's a big city. It all worked out. Somebody leaves early. In my case, I don't work out. On Mondays, so uh, I, they, I'm designated. I come out here with a blanket, and at 5 o'clock, everybody runs out. And I, this is a interesting. Here on the right, this is top 10 public restrooms. It's all automated. It's really incredible. You should stop by and see. That's a great little cafe right there. Uh, Bank Park Cafe. Public Library built in 19 by Career and Hastings. It's called Bo's Arts, that architectural style. Back in the 1880s, 1890s, we did not have a good as well. So all the great architects went over to France to the Ecole des Arts. And uh, you'll see that these are mostly this that we give to our big mental buildings like Grand Central, the Custom House down on Pennsylvania Station, which we destroyed in the 1960s. Uh, so here's Fifth Avenue. People will move into one part of town and have the commercial interest forcing them to move further up. And uh, the last stop of the residential district was way up. Um, and the uh, last stop of the, uh, the department stores are just right below it up there. But they were down here before. And straight up ahead, we see American flags on that building. That's Lord and Tower. Taylor belongs up with the stores with Saks Fifth Avenue, the Henry Vendels. This little down here is from a different era, and they're the last remaining store from that era. The Almonds was down here, so it was when then that the people moved further uptown. We're going to be going down a little hill, and believe it or not, there is some terrain left in the city. We kind of paved and flattened out everything as we could, but thankfully the shapes and the terrain are still there from them to move uptown. And you can see the facade of the building trying to fit in with the residential at the time. When I was up, you know, these were all mansions and class homes around. Empire State Building. We saw the Chrysler Building in Rock. From 1899 until the 1970s, New York City the tallest building in the world. And there were nine of them all together. Of those nine, there are three that are missing. There's a building called the Singer Building, which was actually right near the World Trade Center. Um, was actually demolished in 1988. But of the six left, we're going to see five of them. So here's the Empire State Building. And this is the front of the Empire State Building. This was the tallest in the world from 1931 to 1960. You see the guy on the there?
shirt to the right, got a name, <coughs> like kind of on the periphery of the uh, garment district. This now has a new acronym. We're going to see if it sticks because it's a they call this Nomad. North of Madison. Madison Square Park is right in front of us. But I used to live there, and what it is is the district. This is where they make all the shops and all the Louis Vuitton bags and they down on Canal Street. That's my church there on the right. And church, Norman Vincent Peale. He was the author of The Power of Pop Thinking. He was the pastor there for 50 years. And again, what you're seeing on that, if you look down the side, you'll see some old single family office buildings from like the early 1800s. There are a few old uh, upper class residents, millionaires, homes that, I'm going to show you the one that's left, but that was a single family home on the left, which is a museum today.
1946, if you town tour, you go by a building that's called the Sun Dome, which again, also a lot of history piled up there. Uh, a 20 feet building, building is part of the National Landmark African American Program that they discovered in the 1980s. Uh, the uh, building itself, now building that's where, yes, Virginia, there is a Santa Claus, that editor wrote that, that letter. And how it started life out there. As the very first department store. And this guy, Alexander Stewart, came up with these concepts that we take for granted. Um, fixed sizes in clothing. This is a brand new idea. Fixed shoe sizes. And this is the one. Fixed prices. He fit, you know, put sizes on things. You had to haggle over everything. I mean, psychologically, it accumulated in society. Free time to do it. Here's 14th Street. This is the widest part of the island. Two and a half miles right here. At the end there is where Alphabet City begins, Avenue's A, B, C, and D. Alright, so we're going to the Avenue, and this is, really has a little bit of an old village vibe to it because of these churches coming up on their way. In the 1840s, and church grounds never change. So, if you really concentrate on the church ground, you get the sense of what it was like back then. This was like rural. This was out back in the 1840s. Um, but this is, uh, they're both Gothic revival churches. This one on the right is the first Presbyterian. Um, and the church is just another two blocks up to the right of that. But the second building in on the left, the last remaining old house mansion of the millionaires, that's where the president of Pennsylvania coal. And if you were very successful in the country, um, just like you have your summer house up in Newport Beach, Rhode Island, you had to have your millionaires on fifth row. That's the only one left, and the whole, all these buildings filled with houses like this one, the second one in. And that was from 1853. Now it's the Summer Club, that's an art club. So you have a to the left here and to the right. And now again, like, these are all um, apartment bills. Well, I'll start with the cemeteries. Uh, but that's all NYU now. The street facing that arch is where the Greek Revival houses were, called simply The Row. That's where Edith Wharton and James lived. And that set the tone the avenue to become this very high-end, fashionable did. These are all NYU offices. And uh, one of the things, you know, we're going to go through these neighborhoods that just are just so different, but just next to each other. It's really amazing, you know, before, now we travel so quickly now, by car, way, what have you. Back then, you know, basically foot traffic, and uh, if you go, you, you rode on an omnibus, a horse-drawn stadium. Um, so, you know, these places that are really, you know, so close together, we're really far apart these people. So we're going to go up here and make a right on Broadway. Now, Broadway, we know of as that diagonal road that goes up, uh, City. Um, it's actually an rural community. This was when this was very fashionable and all the wealthy people in society lived down um, along Broadway in what is now Soho. And when they were Broadway uptown, I mean, in the 1830s, they hit the Freeboard Estate. And the Freeboard Estate, the Freeboards, they were very wealthy and fortunate, but they did not want Broadway going through their orchard. And that's why Broadway goes back to their space church. all over the city, but it was really concentrated here in this part. Um, between um, bricks and stones and main building, the steel frame skyscraper, um, steel frame. How about as we go along now, 10, 15 stories, six or seven. Basically, it's before and after the Civil War. Civil War. This is where all the millionaires lived. Well, like up in the past, there weren't so many millionaires back then. A few. But this was fashionable. And there are very few facades left in the period. I'll point out what's there. What happened after the Civil War, though, when um, our Indian and Jewish immigrants started coming.